everybody. How's it going? My name is Danny Ornelas. I work for MLC CAD Systems. Today we're going to look a little closer at the MasterCAM Mill Turn product. So what we're going to what we're looking at is a, is a sample part, and there's several kind of machines that we're going to we're going to show today. I'm going to go ahead and start off by selecting the machine and go to Mill Turn, and I have quite a few here listed. I'm just going to start off with say a generic machine, uh, maybe like this Nakamura here. I'll turn him on. I want to focus on a full-blown mill turn machine that has upper and lower turrets and has two spindles. And when you launch the mill turn product, it's going to launch an environment in the background. And the first thing it's going to want to present to you as the user once you start programming is the setup. Go ahead and wait for this to turn on. Go ahead and minimize this. We get this extended setup dialog box. And it helps prompt us or get us prepared to do the job we're going to do in the machine. So there's different types. We can say we're going to start from the right spindle or the left spindle, depending on your uh, your job. We have different types of setups. We try to take into consideration all the standard type setups that uh, people run into these kind of machines. We can do a continuous bar feed. We have a continuous bar feed and a part pull. Uh, just single pieces of pick off. Uh, single pieces of stock as well here. Uh, we can say just nothing. This will emulate just like a regular two axis lathe. Or we can say two separate programs. Let's say you don't want to do a pick off and you want to do the manual transfer yourself. That's also an option as well. What I'm going to show today is a continuous bar stock pick off, stock pull and cut off here. So we have a we have a tree here, and I'm just going to walk down this tree. So the next thing is setting up my WCS. You can give it a name if you want to. Let's see, I'll call him my webinar. All right. And what this will do, it'll also create view sheets for me as I'm going along here. On the left spindle, the first thing I want to do, or what it's prompting me to do, is to select the geometry, my part. So I'm going to hit the arrow here. I'm going to right click, and go to my top view. And I'm just going to simply click and drag a window around everything. I'm going to end my selection. Move it to my dialog box. It's already prepping me for the left spindle here as well. And I told it to create the right spindle geometry. I'm also going to tell it to create a turn profile. If you look here, it's already creating a green profile. I'm going to go ahead and change it to a different color. Let's say red. And for demonstration purposes, I'm going to go ahead and select a heavier style line so we can see it a little easier. Get apply there. And it's going to take me, the next step is to say bar stock. So the number of pieces I want to make, I'm just going to go ahead and say, I'm going to make, let's say, five pieces of this here. And notice how this is constantly being updated. So I just extended my stock. I'll be able to pull this part out and be ready to make the next part. I'll go ahead and accept the diameter. It knows kind of the size of the part that I have. I'm not going to be adding the extra stock on that OD. On the faces, I'm going to go ahead and add 100,000 to the front face and the back face. So when it parts off, it'll give me an extra 100,000 on the back side. To give me something to face off when it moves over to the right spindle. I'm going to select my sub jaw. Oops, it's already giving me an error and says this machine I picked, it only accepts parts up to this size right here. And these are some things that we'll be talking about. When you select the machine environment, you have to make sure that you know all the limitations of it, all the kinematics, and so forth. So I'm going to show you how we can uh, manually change this as well. I'm going to select OK to this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start off from the face of my part, and I'm going to go ahead and stick this part out. Oh, let's just say uh, five and a half inches. It's okay to that. Probably not going to let me do it until I change that. And go ahead and temporarily get out of here. So let's go okay to this. All right. So the setup is not completely done. Leave my chucks way up here. It'll hold the stock up to here, but it won't let it go through the throat. Go to file. I should have picked up the machine, but we'll, I'll show you how we can quickly edit this. 
we, we give these dimensions. Sometimes we'll do a, the dimensions are kind of on the lower side for safety purposes. So on this left chuck here, I'm gonna right click and say properties and the geometry. I have my ID set to two and a half here or 2.2. Let's say I make it uh, just two and three quarter, give myself plenty of room here. So let's okay to this. On the right spindle, I can change that as well. Right click and go to property. Just so I can make sure I have plenty of room. Two point two and three quarter. Let's okay to that. All right. Let's go back to my job setup. I'm back on my bar stock here. I got two and a quarter here. I could probably even increase that to two and a half now that I've given myself room to check on. If I go back to my stick out, I can probably bring this down just to five and a half. And if you look over here, now it allows my chuck to get off here. Go to five. I'm trying to, I'm going to choke this up onto this part as tight as I can. No need for me to be, no need to have this part sticking out very far. Right. On my right spindle, my chuck jaws, I'm going to go ahead and say reset this. I actually should go ahead and copy them over to this side. But that works work good. I'm going to say my pickoff. I want my pickoff to be, when I transfer this part over, let's say I pick off right in the middle of that part right there. And I'm just going to tell it I'm going to use a 1A thick part off blade. I'll select OK to this. And I should get everything all set up for my left spindle and my right spindle. I come over here. This is what my part's going to look like when I transfer it over. So I will be able to machine this area and these features. And over here on this side, I'm away from the chuck, being safe. I'll be able to machine everything on this side. And I'm probably not going to put all the features today. What I want to, what we wanted to focus on was showing you the setup sheet to start with. And the setup sheet, the job setup. We try to make this as simple as we can, as intuitive as possible. And uh, if you just follow these steps right here, once you decide what type of what type of uh, what type of operations you're going to be doing, this will set everything up ahead of time. It's very important that you understand the process before you get into it, because once you get into it and you want to change afterwards. You, then it, depending on depending on the operations you already have in there, they may not be compatible to the type of cuts that you have. So let's just make some simple cuts here. Let's say I go ahead and do a face cut. No face cut. Uh, I'll just take the first tool it offers, tool number one. And here on this machine, it gives me I got upper right. If I'm going to cut with the top turret on the left on the right side here. Or I'm going to go over here and cut on this side. I could say I'm going to use my lower turret, either on the left or the right. I'm going to start off real simple, upper left right here. I'm going to pick this tool. This tool has the insert facing toward me. The yellows are facing toward me. The red inserts are facing away from me. Take my setup. If you guys are familiar with MasterCam, this is a basic facing operation. I'll select OK to that. And there's my first operation. And if I back pop that, we show the tool coming down and cutting. All right. Now, let's say I want to go ahead and rough this. I'll go ahead and say rough. Now go ahead and say some. I'm going to cut this shoulder out. And let's say I change the tool. I'll go ahead and use insert facing that tool again. This would be tool number two. And I'm going to just go ahead and say use the stock. I can adjust that top. It shows me I want it to extend past this shoulder. So in my lead in, lead out, I'm going to extend that cut, let's say, a quarter of an inch. I go adjust that top, and it shows that it's going to pass that shoulder. I'll select OK to this, and there's my first two cuts right there. So let's say I wanted to do, uh, well, let's take a look and see what we have here. Go through the process. I'm going to go ahead and hit the G1 button here for posting. And the mill turn, 
it doesn't go straight to the posting. It's going to get you to the IOF, and the IOF shows you uh, what's going on here. So now you get more information to fill out right here. You can tell it, you know, whether you want coolant off or on. We have all different types of uh, coolant strategies now. They're all customizable, right? Balance cutting, G68 for pinch turning, if that's what you want to output. Where do you want this tool to come from? From the cutoff position, reference. Plenty more things here. You can also fill out some information for programmer name, job number, and so forth. It'll come out in the setup sheets. And we can also have a simulation. If I say launch, it's me to my full machine simulation. And right now we're only looking at one string, so you have this one window. So right now I have most of the components turned off. Let me zoom in here. Okay, so there's my broken tool, my finish tool. If I wanted to look at the whole machine, I could and show it. There's this Nakamura machine here. Recognize where all the sheet metal is at. For the sake of demonstration, I'm going to go ahead and hide that. Let's focus on just the cutting tools. Go ahead and slow him down a bit. I'm going to go ahead and hit run. He's going to face it off, change it, change tool, and and then cut that, rough it out there. So it gives you some nice simulation. So one of the few things I want to point out are, like, look how far this tool is sticking out. So we probably wouldn't want to have tools sticking out that way. Let me show you some of the uh, some of the features that we have here. In the middle turn, we have a few extra icons here. We can say set up the tools on the machine, and then our upper turret. This shows our two positions here. And I can right click here and I can say, let's view the components and all the tools loaded up on there. And it shows everything here. So it's tool number one, tool number two. For those of y'all that may be asking, do we support multiple tool holders? Let's say I go ahead and uh, on position 16, just to kind of show you. We have everything for lower turret, the LTs. So we do have two stations for, for cross turning, even for boring, okay? There's our upper, tur upper, upper turret. So let's say we want to, if you just hover over these, it gives you the example. So this is upper turret. It allows for all these positions, and they're both insert up tools here. So if I take this, let's say I put them into pod 16 right here, right? Now if I go look at this and say, view the components and all its children. So here's a tool. So on this, a lot of these machines have staggered style uh, positions. So you only have 12 stations, but between you have individual ones. And it goes all the way up to 24. So for this particular one, we're going to be using the primary position of number six and the secondary position of number 18. And we can, we can quickly change these things if we wanted to. If I come up here and I remove these tools, remove them, off of this station, they're not on the machine here. Now, it's tool number one and tool number two, so one, it's not going to allow me to put them in tool number six and 18. I need to come back go ahead and say, uh, let's look at this one more time, make sure that I got it right, six and 18. Let me go renumber these. So for this one here, I want that tool to be number six. Just real quick, just change the names or the numbers, sorry about that. And this would be tool number 18. So if you have a job with a lot of tools, trying to maximize how you place them in the turret, we can support that. So now I can just take these tool, take tool number six, and he'll fit in the primary, and he'll fit in the secondary. I'll put the right click, and let's view these components. So now they're out there and they're shared they're shared uh, folder here. We can also adjust how far they stick out. Let's say set the set the projection. This guy's sticking out too far. You just bring them back down. Let's bring them down an inch for now. And if I come over here and view that component, he shows that he's a little further down. I can do the same thing to the tool here as well. All right? Escape out of that view. 
that's the projection here. And we'll drag him down an inch as well. Okay. Oh, that was the other one. That's the projection. Okay, it right. Okay. Let's locate it is. And if we go back to our simulation, it'll update in the machine as well. Hopefully this is giving you an insight as to what happens in the mill turn environment. As far as your toolpaths go, if you're familiar with the Master Cam Lathe product, you're going to see a lot of similarities on how you. Wait a second, first loading up everything. There we go. There's our tools. Should be in the shared station over here somewhere. There they are, right there. Took me a while to find it. Huh. Okay. Uh, getting a little, trying to get this centered up. We'll go ahead and run this simulation. Now he's going to go ahead and cut with that facing tool and a quick little index. And he faces that part off right there. Now, what happens when we have a dual stream? Let's add another tool path. Let's say I decide to finish this part using this profile. And let's go ahead and say uh, opposite turning tool. I'm going to use the lower turret here. By selecting the geometry, it kind of pre-selected it for me. On my lead in, lead out. Go ahead and extend him a little bit as well. I'll get that tool back. Click OK. Let's go back to our IOF. And now we'll see that there's two streams here. The one for the lower turret, one for the upper turret. And to give you an example of how this works here, there is no thinking going on right now. I go ahead and say launch. I'm probably going to get some interferences in the cut. Let it load up the tools here. Okay, let's go ahead and run this. I'm doing this on purpose, so now it shows that it's, uh, the tools were definitely out of sequence there. Go ahead and uh, I'm gonna close that out. I want to have this finished tool path, not do anything until, it, until this rougher is finished. So to sync it up, it's just real quickly, just click and drag my icon or grab the, the event and put it over here. So the start of this tool will not do anything until this tool is finished. So go ahead and save this. I'm go ahead and relaunch my simulation. Well, it seems back in order here. This time, though, when we run it, the tool's not going to go anywhere. It's going to sit and wait until it's time for him to come here and cut. That way, there's no interferences, and it's all simulated correctly. Same thing, we want to choke up on this tool. We can go back and look at that. Go back to master cam. Go to our component icon. Let's go to the lower turret. Go ahead and say set the projection. And same thing. Let me drag him, bring him down a little bit. Okay. So you continue on with your tool path that way. So let's say um, I want to go ahead and cut this this hex out. We go to milling. I do a contour. I go ahead and select this geometry. Grab a tool. Let's say I grab a, a 3 inch flat end mill here. And on my setup, 
I want to know this again, the mill turn environment will help guide you and help you select the type of tool that's available. So if I say this is coming from the lower turret, the lower turret only allows you C axis, axis substitution and C axis. If I choose to use the upper turret, then the upper turret has the ability to do Y axis as well. So let's say I go ahead and do a on the top Y axis is face cut. And it's very intuitive about how it selects this plane. I don't have to do anything. This, this software will, will automatically pick the plane for you. I tell it what type of cut I want. And give it a depth. Zoom in here. I want to cut to that depth right there. I'll just put everything in, a, in an absolute mode. Just get close to the part. Lead in, lead out. Standard lead in, lead out. Maybe I'll narrow these down a little bit. And I'll exit out the same way. Let's locate that. I should have my tool path right there. So my bat spot there. Standard bat spot still. Still here in the mill turn. And we'll make this cut right here. And again, if I go to my uh, my IOF. Oh. Let's load them up. Let's see where we're at here. This end mill is tool number one, and on the lower turret, tool number one here. So you can't fit in the same place. Again, the software is pretty darn smart. Let's come up here. On this lower turret, let's go ahead and edit this tool. And let's go ahead and make him tool five. Go ahead and finish that. He becomes tool number five. Come up here, and now that he's not loaded, we just say go ahead and say load him onto the tool, onto the turret. I'm sorry, up here in the upper turret. Looking at the wrong spot. I could have left him as tool one, but I have to remove these these holders, that holder that I left there. Remove it. Go ahead and remove this one here as well. And that was the error. This was tool number one. He could have easily gone into position number one, but I had those folders. They were the wrong style folders. I forgot to go back and change that. So let's locate it is. Select all. Go back to my IOF. Now I get no errors. Now we talked about the sync in here. So one of the things I want to do is to make sure that this this in mail here. I want to sync the other way and make sure that it doesn't do anything until it's finished on the bottom is done. Go ahead and save this update and relaunch my simulation. Go ahead and run this. Just going to face it off, rough it, finish it with the lower turret. Then the upper turret waits until it has time and it won't interfere with any, anything else. Okay. That's looking pretty good here. I'm going to go to a, a part transfer here real quick. I'm not going to machine everything on this part. Just kind of want to show you the, the process as well. Go ahead and close this out. Using some of our automated tool paths here on the turning, we got part handling. And so we, since we chose to uh, pick off and cut off, I'm going to go ahead and use this operation right here. So it should automatically do all these events. There's quite a, quite a bit of events that we we combined together to go ahead and make it easy to uh, to make this happen. So the turret, upper park turret, all these should be okay. Let's look at okay this. And it should come over, part off, but not any problem, and then have the part over in the second part, uh, uh, move the part over to the to the right spindle. So there's a, now I'm going to come over here. So now I'm going to come up here and do a facing operation. So let's come up here and say uh, face for my second group. Uh, trying to utilize some turrets here. And there's many, oops, let's go to the lower turret here. Lower right. 
to change my change my tools around. Yeah, I'll go ahead and take this tool, and it'll be uh, tool number two. If I think it's not being taken, I'll select OK to this. It faces that off. And the same thing, roughing on the lower turret. I'll take this guy here as well, and I will use my uh, my stock. And select OK to that. So let's look at everything. Simulate. Go back to the IOF. We're going to see a lot more operation now because we have all this transfer stuff. Okay. So go ahead and run this. We'll launch this. And we're probably going to get some interference because before I face off, I need to let all of this finish. And again, you're going to see, it's better to see the interferences here in the software. Uh, these machines get very expensive, and that's the reason for having like this no turn uh, product. So it gives you, it gives you all the components that are happening, you know, that you have on your machine. So here, there's no parking here. So he's cutting, which is probably legal, but there's no parts sitting right there. So now we're going to, while this guy's cutting, we're going to get an error here. He's crashed into the part because nothing's in sequence here. So go ahead and definitely stop this right now. There's no need to finish. So what I'm going to do is open up this, open up this part. This face in here, I don't want anything to happen until after that right there. Save it. Let's go ahead and relaunch it. All right, let's give it a try. We'll run it. And hopefully we get no interference here. Okay. So right there it crashed. We might need to take this. And right here we have another crash. We have the tool sticking out too far. The sequence to the right. And this is where we start talking about, you know, projections of tools. These the turret positions, we have to get the number out of the way. So there's several things that we have to take care of. And how do we fix those things? Well, you come over here to the kickoff cutoff on the turret part. It's telling us what tool number we want to call. I believe I need to switch it to something like maybe six to get that two out of the way. I'll take this tool path. And then the next thing I need to do is get my cutoff blade. He is, where's he at? He's in station number two. I'm going to set the projection on him. He's sticking out way too far. I'll bring him back down, say, minus two inches. We select everything. So typical things to look for when you're using the mill turn environment.
So we're going to start the simulation. It's another thing too here. We're going to start the simulation with a red here. All this is telling me is the length of this holder is interfering with a component. So we'll just have to you know, be aware of that. We can come back and change that holder, the length of the holder. So if I come back over here to my lathe cutoff, I'm going to edit this tool. This holder here, the overall length, let's just say I make them, uh, I'll make them four inches. And just to make sure, I'm going to go ahead and look at the component. Make sure that I didn't put them too far in. So I'm going to say, uh, that's the projection here. He's definitely too far in now. Just bring them back out. Just get him back. Oops, sorry. Just remove them off, and then I'm going to put them back in there. Now, if I set that projection, I couldn't seem to get them to come out of there. There he goes. Let's bring them up. Uh, bring them up to zero. Go back to the IOF. Relaunch our simulation. <clears throat> All right. So what I'm looking for when I start my simulation, there's nothing red, which means there's no components that are interfering. This part off blade looks very good now. Go ahead and run this. And hopefully we get uh, you know, that slower chart that it parks in the right position. He's gonna index to a place where there's no tools in the way. Uh, I did crash into something here from my upper turret. I gotta make sure it's out of the way. And that folder's you know, crashing right there as well. So definitely some work to be to be done here. A lot of it is just not clean enough and making sure that I get everything correctly here. It's it's the holders. I gotta switch over to, to the right type of holders. There's I can switch this holder from a left to a right. That way it's it's more of a holder that looks like uh the opposite of this one here, so it doesn't have interference with these dolls right here. Uh, appreciate you guys uh, showing up today. Thank you and uh, look forward to uh, the next webinar.